In this video, we're going to talk about scopes. By this point, hopefully we've done some work with the DVOM and we're getting acquainted with how to do some volt measurements, resistance, current, um, and utilize this tool well and be able to interpret the results and use them in a diagnostic process. Where we're going to step into scopes is anytime we've got a reading, say voltage or even current, where we want to find more information about how that value changes over time. That's where scopes really come in. Scopes really work well. And the great thing is once we've become acquainted with this meter, whether it's an old analog meter, a digital meter, they really do the same thing. A scope is right there next to it. And so I've got a couple of different ideas in terms of how scopes get packaged. So we've got handheld scopes like this, and we've got laptop or USB scopes like the very popular Pico scope. Scopes really shine in their function and their ability to graph voltage and readings that we get over time. And the upside is, is that technology continues to evolve and a lot of these tools become more and more accessible to us. And so now we're using scopes for things, not only voltage graphed over time, but we use amp clamps to look at current changes over time, look at large um, amounts of current. We've got clamps in the PicoScope kits that go up to 600 amps. And the other cool things that we're looking at and using pretty often now are other tools from PicoScope and other manufacturers where we could monitor pressure and be able to look at pressure over time for anything from the vacuum and the intake manifold to in-cylinder pressure. So doing compression tests and looking at all the four-stroke process with great detail. And another tool that I don't have pictured here, but NVH, so some of the noise vibration and harshness testing, PicoScope's really leading the way in using accelerometers paired with their scope technology to do good diagnostics with that. That's some of the quick background um, on these scopes. We are going to focus our efforts really with the PicoScope. So we're going to talk about the equipment that's in this case and then how to get basic setups and just do some voltage measurements. So this is the PicoScope 4223 uh, standard kit. We've got a handful of these kits here at Parkland College, and these are the ones that we typically use for a lot of our students as we get started, um, trying to talk about scopes and how to set up not only the software, but the hardware aspect as well. And one of our goals is to do this early um, to really try to mirror that what happens with this tool, while it is a little bit more complex and sometimes intimidating, it really gives us the same type of information and utilizes the same type of connections as a voltmeter. And so in this kit for our PicoScope, I've got the main scope itself. And so this box is able to monitor through these BNC connections, voltage, and these have a great sample rate. Um, so they're able to take basically measurements a million times a second. The other things that this comes with, I get a couple of amp clamps that we mentioned. And so a small range amp clamp that goes up to 60 amps, a little bit higher range that goes to 600 on these particular um, amp clamps, they are powered by a 9-volt battery, so we have to check that we keep them turned off so that we don't kill the battery. Uh, that's something that we struggle with a little bit. And then I've got a whole bunch of other means to make connections. And so I've got some alligator clips where we can do basic connections. This is a wire piercing connection. We want to be pretty reserved about how we utilize that. PicoScope does a great job with their acupuncture set. Um, this set's a little sparse but we've got lots of different probes and connections that we can use. And again, we wanna be careful about how we utilize these so we're not damaging terminals, damaging connectors as we go about diagnostics. The other thing that's in here that's worth talking about is this attenuator. Um, the attenuator is an important piece to protect the scope when I do high voltage measurements. Up top, we've then tried to sort a lot of our cables with bags. So here's my five pin USB connector to get hooked up to a laptop. And then I've got some standard leads like this that allow me just to do a voltage measurement. We've got a couple specialty adapters. Like this one is for a secondary ignition pickup. And so it's got a clip there, just like you'd see on a timing light um, to look at secondary kilovolt firing values. So then to get started, I've got just a few things out. We're going to need our laptop that has our PicoScope software on it. We're going to need a USB cable to connect to the scope, scope box itself. And then 
just a standard lead here where I've got the BNC to do two different connections and we'll get out a couple of probes to make connections at those points. So then the end of that lead, we've got these banana plug, banana jack style connections. They're nice in that depending on what kind of thing I want it to measure, they do piggyback like this. So say I had both channels in operation and I wanna share the same reference point, I could stack both black leads or ground references together. It is important to note that these are somewhat fragile. Um, students are often a little hard on these. Remember this is precision equipment, so I wanna be careful I'm um, mindful about where I pull on things and not let too much weight pull that down. So these leads are similar to a DVOM. They pop right in. And so now I can take this and I can make some measurements similar to what I'm used to when it comes to DVOM measurements. So here we've got a reference before and after our light bulb. If I hold my switch and I turn that on, you'll see the PicoScope software takes a moment and it makes some adjustments. So here we're in the software. Uh, the software is in the auto range function. And so it looked and saw that there was a voltage change and it went about trying to scale that so that we could see it. So if I take that away and give it a moment, it may move around, bring it back. It generally does a good job of holding on to a value. One of the challenges though with the auto range is that depending on what I'm looking at in terms of a signal, it may jump around with the scale as it tries to best frame it for us on the picture. And so if we don't want that to happen, uh, we do have the control to make adjustments. So here on the left side, I've got my A channel, which is the channel that I'm using. And some of the early setups that we need to pay attention to is what style probe am I using? X1 is just my standard connection. There's lots of other choices in there that we'll get into in the future. The other thing that I'm looking at, resolution enhancement. The default setting here is 12 bits. What this references is my vertical resolution. So basically how many samples um, vertically are we going to plot on this graph? We can stick with 12 bits for now. Low pass filtering is another function um, that I can use. It is a post um, filtering function, meaning it waits for the capture to occur and then it gets applied. And then down here, my scale and my offset are tools that we can use to better frame what's happening. Um, there's also some other great tools in the toolbar that we'll talk about. So for now, we're going to use X1. Then I'm going to go over here, hit this drop down arrow, and now I get my range for that X1 probe. And so you can see right now we're on 20 volts, which works well for having a 12 volt power source like this. You see, if I go down to something like two volts, I get a channel overage or over range. So it tells me that that input that I'm looking at is greater than the two volt scale that I've selected. If I go to 100 volts, I'm gonna be able to measure there, but you'll see I don't have a lot of resolution to look at. One of the great upsides to a USB-based scope is that as long as I capture the data, even if I'm at a higher range like this, I've got a lot of ability to zoom in and look at a detailed picture. Uh, so really, I just wanna make sure that I've selected a range like this 20 volts that gets me the whole picture uh, without going over so that I've got all the data on the screen. Next spot, I've got my type of voltage. I can look at AC, I can look at DC or frequency. We'll stick with the DC for now. And then this B is where I would set up my B channel. So if I was going to utilize this other port on the PicoScope box, I could look at both of those at the same time. Above that, I've got a couple other choices to talk about. Five milliseconds per division. This dropdown represents the time scale that I'm looking at. So difficult to see, but there are boxes here that note each of the time scales as I go across. So currently every box is five milliseconds and that represents what I see on the screen. And so I can change that. I can go to regular seconds as much as 5,000. Uh, if I go to something like two seconds, I can watch that go across. And so then here's where I can see as I make the connection of the light bulb turn on and off, that gets graphed and represented on the screen. And so we'll take a minute and just stop that. Down here at the bottom, I can stop it and basically hold that screen so that I can take a look at what's going on. And so I can see my on-offs, and we'll leave that there for a minute as we talk through the other components. The next one here is my sample rate. So that's the number of samples that are going to be captured or it will attempt to capture. This is the default that I've got 1 million samples being captured. 
One of one is my frames. So if we were to allow this to record data onto the next screen, it will take place. This will go away. It will come across. We can go ahead and take a look at it. So we'll hit play. We'll go down to one second just to speed things up here. We'll do half a second. And so I can make some changes again like this, just on and off. And you can see that the frames at the count at the top are beginning to count. And at any time I can go back, I can stop it. And now I can page back through one of three, two of three, and see that data that occurs. Lastly, over here at the top, I've got several tools that I can use to look at components. So this one here is the windowed zoom. That allows me to just drag a box and zoom in on those specific parts of the capture to get more detail. The other two then allow me to just zoom in independently, zoom out, undo. So if I made a change I didn't like, I can just hit the undo button. I can hit this to get back to the full screen. And then the other fun thing, you notice this little box comes up down here. I have the ability to drag a little box that represents my view here and also move it. So a lot of great tools so that I can take a closer look at certain parts of my capture if I need to. Down here at the bottom toolbar, we talked about the start and stop function to get a live view or to hold it. These other functions of trigger, measurements, and rulers, we're going to hold on to those for a future video and just keep it simple here at this point. So that's what I've got for just some basics of setting up the scope and getting some basic readings as well as navigating the software. Um, it's a pretty straightforward tool, but it does have a lot of power to it. And there's a lot of detail that we can work on. And so that's where we'll focus in future videos is how do I get some, maybe some specific tests done. Uh, so next we're going to do a video and talk about how do I check a, a potentiometer, say like a throttle position sensor, and go through that setup and that process with the Pico scope. But hopefully this video helps with just general setup, you know, getting acquainted with the tools and the pieces just to conduct some basic voltage measurements.